Okay, so we learned how to assign oxidation numbers, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a bunch of chemical equations and determine if they are redox reactions or not. And if we decide that they are redox reactions because the oxidation numbers are changing, we're going to then determine what substance got oxidized, what substance got reduced, what substance is the oxidizing agent, and what substance is the reducing agent, okay? There are four categories of reactions that can also work as redox. Not always, but they, they most of the time they, they can be redox. Those categories are combination reactions, decomposition reactions, displacement reactions, and combustion reactions. So those are your four. Metathesis, or we sometimes call them exchange, or in intro chem class you call them double replacement, those ones are not redox, but the other four can be. So I'm going to focus on the first three. The combustion reactions, uh, those are the ones where you have a hydrocarbon, the ones that we did in chapter three. You have an organic compound, you burn it in oxygen, and you're going to get carbon dioxide and water. Those are combustion reactions. Those will be redox. But let's focus on the first three I talked about, combination reactions. What is a combination reaction? A combination reaction is a reaction where you have two or more reactants and they combine to form only one product, just one product, okay? That's a combination reaction. Two or more reactants, you get just one product. Okay. Is this redox or isn't it? Well, the only way to find out is if we assign oxidation numbers. So let's go ahead and do it. The oxidation number of the sodium all by itself on the left, not part of a compound, not part of an ion, nothing, it's just all alone, is zero, right? Well, what would it be over here? You ignore the coefficients. Don't worry about the coefficients. Just look at the sodium here. Well, we know that sodium, as part of sodium chloride, this is an ionic compound, so that means sodium is an ion. Sodium is a, is a group 1A metal. It will, it's a fixed charge metal, so sodium is a plus 1 here. So sodium went from 0 to plus 1. What does that mean? The oxidation number went up. So if the oxidation number goes up, that means that that element got oxidized. So we're going to put an O, an oxidized. So sodium got oxidized. Okay, now let's crunch the numbers with the chlorine. Chlorine over here is a zero, and over here is a minus one because it's part of the um, ionic compound. And if the sodium is plus one, this has to be minus one because remember, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to equal zero. So what happened to the chlorine? Chlorine went from zero down to minus one. Anytime the oxidation number goes down, that substance got reduced. So say this is reduced. Okay, good. So we've identified that sodium got oxidized and chlorine got reduced. Now here's the other question. Who's the oxidizing agent? The substance that got reduced is the oxidizing agent. And the substance that got oxidized is the reducing agent. So you have to think of it as, okay, I got oxidized, so I am responsible for reducing you. You got reduced, so you are responsible for oxidizing me. Because remember, there has to be a transfer of electrons. So if I get oxidized, I'm losing electrons. Well, what's going to happen to those electrons? You're going to pick them up. You're getting reduced. So you can't have an oxidation without a reduction. All right? So we're going to write for, and I'm going to erase the word combination here just so that I can have some space here. The sodium got oxidized, but the sodium is the reducing agent. And by the way, the agents are always, always, always the reactants, okay? They're not going to be in the, the products. And since this got reduced, this is the oxidizing agent, okay? So that's 
the combination reaction as an example of a redox reaction. All right, so I'm going to erase the combination reaction just so I can have some space here. And I'm going to move on to decomposition. What's a decomposition reaction? A decomposition reaction is a reaction where you have one reactant and more than one product. Okay, sort of the opposite of the combination. So one reactant, more than one product. Here we have the decomposition of potassium chlorate. When you heat it up, this little triangle means heat, you're going to need um, sometimes a catalyst for this to work faster. But when you heat it up, potassium chlorate decomposes to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Okay? So, get this a little closer here so you can see carefully. I want to make sure you see everything. Okay. All right. So, how do we see if it's a redox reaction? We're going to assign oxidation numbers. Um, the potassium is part of a, an uh, ionic compound here, part of an ionic compound here. Nothing's changing in the potassium. It's going to be plus one here and plus one here. Remember, just ignore the coefficients. So I'm not going to bother with the potassium. Nothing's happening to the potassium. Let's take a look at the chlorine and the oxygen. Let's first look at the oxygen. Oxygen here as part of an ionic compound, but you know, as part of a compound, remember how we said oxygen is going to be usually minus 2? We're going to say that oxygen's minus 2 here. And here it's all by itself, so it's got to be a 0, right? So oxygen goes, the oxygen goes from minus 2 to 0. So what happened to the oxygen? The oxygen went up in oxidation number. It went from minus 2 up to 0. So that means the oxygen got oxidized. If the oxidation number goes up, that means that substance got oxidized. So the oxygen has been oxidized. This is oxidized. Okay, now let's do the more tricky one, the chlorine. Let's see what happened to the chlorine. Chlorine on this side, well, oxygen is minus 2 times 3 is minus 6, and this is plus 1. So this is sort of like the one that we did at the end of the, of the last video. The, this is minus 6, this is plus 1, so this has to be plus 5. So the chlorine on the left is plus 5, and then let's t see what it is over here. Here, we know that potassium is plus 1, chlorine is has to be minus 5. You see that? So oh, what am I talking about? Ignore me, ignore me, ignore me. Rewind. Potassium is plus 1, chlorine minus 1. Okay? Chloride is minus 1, potassium is plus 1. This is just a simple binary ionic compound. Pretend I didn't say that thing I just said a little while ago. I erased it anyway. Erase it from your memories. All right, so the chlorine was a plus 5 over here and it became a minus one over here. What happened to the oxidation number of the chlorine? It went down. So if the oxidation number went down, that means the chlorine got reduced. So the chlorine got reduced. All right, so if they ask you on a, let's say a multiple choice test for a problem like this, what element got reduced? It would be the chlorine. What element got oxidized? It's the oxygen. What happened to the potassium? Nothing. All right, now here's the tricky part. Who's the oxidizing agent and who's the reducing agent? Remember what I told you guys. The element that got oxidized is the reducing agent. The element that got reduced is the oxidizing agent. However, and here's the thing, if the element is part of, the co of a whole compound, the whole compound is the agent. So, this element is part of a compound. This element is part of the same compound. So the oxidizing agent is the reducing agent in this scenario. Okay? So if they ask you, what is the oxidizing agent? Potassium chlorate. What is the reducing agent? Potassium chlorate. Okay? Little tricky, but that's the way it is with decomposition reactions. Okay, good. And now we'll do displacement. 
here's a displacement reaction. Now, before I get into relating this to redox, what exactly are displacement reactions? In a displacement reaction, an element that is higher on the activity series can kick an element that is lower out of, on the activity series out of the compound and replace it. The activity series is in your book. It is table 4.6. So you're going to need this series here. You don't have to memorize it. I will give it to you. But this series helps you decide who can kick who out. If you look and see magnesium, magnesium is over here, okay? And it is higher than hydrogen on the activity series. Since magnesium is higher than hydrogen, it can kick the hydrogen out. But let's say I had something like this. If I had H2 plus MgCl2, is the hydrogen higher than the magnesium on the series? No, hydrogen is below the magnesium, so this would be no reaction. So anything higher on the series can kick something lower out. Anything lower on the series can't kick something higher out. One more quick one here. Let's say I have an aluminum and I have a zinc chloride. Is aluminum higher than zinc on the series? Yes, aluminum is here, zinc is here. So the aluminum would kick the zinc out and then hook up with the chlorine. And then you would end up having AlCl3 and then you'd have to go back and uh, balance all this. So let's say I put a three here and then I would have to, so three times two is six. So I have to put a two here uh, and then I put a two here. I think it's balanced now. Yeah. Anyway, bottom line is displacement. You can do it only if you have this guy with you. Okay. Anything higher in the series can kick anything lower. All right, now let's see if these displacement reactions are also redox. Take a look at the one I have down here. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid will give you magnesium chloride and hydrogen. All right, so displacement, by the way, is what um, in intro chem they used to call it single replacement. All right, so let's assign oxidation numbers for this. Magnesium on the left is a zero, right? Because it's all by itself sitting alone. Now here it's hooked up to the chloride. It's an ionic compound. It's a group 2A metal. So that's not going to change. Group 2A metals are fixed charge. So zero is going to become a plus two. So magnesium goes from zero to plus two. Its oxidation number went up. If its oxidation number went up, that means it got oxidized. So the magnesium got oxidized. All right. Now, let's take a look at the hydrogen. Because I notice over here it's all by itself. So obviously something happened to the hydrogen. The hydrogen on this side is part of this compound. Chloride is minus one. And then remember the rule, was it rule number four? Hydrogen is plus one. So we'll go hydrogen on the left is plus one. On the right, it's a zero because he's sitting all alone. So what happened to the hydrogen it went from plus one down to zero. Its oxidation number went down. And if its oxidation number went down, that means it got reduced. So let's say this got reduced. So multiple choice question. What element got oxidized in this thing? Magnesium. What element got reduced? Hydrogen. Okay. Who's the oxidizing agent? Well, the element that got reduced was the hydrogen, but because hydrogen is part of a compound, this whole HCl, HCl is the oxidizing agent. Remember, uh, the agents are always reactants, not products. So the HCl is the oxidizing agent. What is the reducing agent? The magnesium. Magnesium is the reducing agent. Why is magnesium the reducing agent? Because the magnesium got oxidized. How do we know the magnesium got oxidized? Its oxidation number went up. When the oxidation number goes up, that means that that substance lost electrons. Okay, 
So I think, oh, and then the last little thing I have down here, anytime you've got a metathesis or exchange reaction, that's not going to be redox, okay? So if they give you an, a metathesis or an exchange reaction, uh, which is like, you know, the double replacement, and they ask you, is it redox? You don't even have to bother assigning oxidation numbers because it's not redox, okay? Good. We're done with oxidation reductions. The next video will start calculations in Chapter 4. We'll talk about solution chemistry. We'll do molarity, solution stoichiometry, titration, all sorts of fun stuff.